All right, hello everybody. Back for, I think this is our fourth cartooning video. So, Davis and some other folks had suggested I do something related to the military today. Um, now, you know, this might interest boys more than girls, but Sophie is a great trooper. She's gonna be joining along today. Um, you know, boys tend to be a little bit more aggressive. They like um, drawing things that involve conflict, guns, shooting, and explosions, and that sort of thing, which is fine. You don't wanna deter boys from drawing what they wanna draw, because if you do, you'll just deter them from drawing to begin with. Same thing with writing. Let boys write whatever they want to write about. That'll get them into writing and reading about books about, you know, war, conflict, that sort of stuff. At least in my experience, it gets boys interested, interested in reading. So anyway, let's start here. We'll draw on some of our previous uh, skills. Now I'm going to draw an army man shooting a machine gun. So here's how we start. As usual, I like to start with the notes. Make your nose however you want, but I'm going to make mine like that. Now, while he's shooting this machine gun, he's kind of angry because he's shooting the bad guys, but he's also slightly pleased that he's shooting well. So what I'm going to do is start off kind of with an angry eyebrow, and then I'll draw his eye in here. He's looking at the enemy there. We'll draw the other angry eyebrow there and complete the eyes. Now, let's go down, up around, down like this. This is gonna be the beginning of his gnashing of teeth. So that's, and then down here, we're gonna go down and up like we usually do. But this time, we're gonna keep the teeth shut. So I'm going to do the top row of teeth like this. You just, you go down and over. These are all of his top teeth. Now he's going to have his, his jaw clenched. His teeth are locked together. We'll move the lower row of teeth in a little bit. Because as you can usually see, if you look at your teeth in the mirror, your lower row of teeth are slightly smaller and they, they go in a little bit more from the sides from, compared to your upper row of teeth. So I'm going to put that line there. Then I draw the line for his skin there as we usually do, loop around there. I'm gonna put an ear in for him. Remember, we've got kind of the almost six there to show his little, the little opening in his ear. Now I'm gonna loop up and kind of make a shape like that. That's the sort of the visor, the small visor of his helmet. I'll complete his helmet going into the back there. And I'll put a little star on his helmet to make it kind of look more like he's, he's got a military helmet. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to do what his, I'm gonna do his left hand. And his left hand is gonna be holding the top of the machine gun, because the machine gun is moving very fast and it's, it's hard to keep it stable. Great job, bud. And it's, so he's going to be holding it down because it bounces around a lot. So here, watch what I do here. First, I do the, just, just follow along here. Now, what was that? This is, again, this kind of chicken, uh, chicken meat part of the bone for his hand. And this is going to be his fingers curling around the machine gun, right? His fingers are curled over. Uh, and then I'm going to bring the top of his hand down, bring this down a little further and out. And then I'm going to give him a little cuff on his army uniform like this. It's like, it looks like you can kind of, you can see the cuff sagging here a little bit and you fill that in with some shadow and then you build the rest of the cuff around it. Now we're going to put part of his arm here like that. His shoulder is going to come up and down, and you end it in line with the bottom of his, of his cuff. Bring the rest of his hand over. And then I show some wrinkle in his shirt, and then finishing off that part of his arm. Now, let me see. Let's give him a little collar. I'll go down and up, down and up like that. I'll put a little button there. Uh... Now, let's do the rest of the gun. 
there's going to be a big part of the gun here. Now, see where we had his, his fingers curling over? Let's bring the gun up and down. That's going to be part of the gun. The trigger that he's shooting will be somewhere down here. So let, remember we did that last week? We sort of did a, a loop like that. Two more loops going inward like that. And this is where the, the trigger is and sort of the, uh, the grip of the, uh, of, the, of the gun. So now I'll continue this line over here. Uh, we'll give it a stock, this gun. Maybe it goes way down here. You could have also, if I hadn't drawn this stuff, if I thought ahead, I could have put the stock straight out and back. But you're hiding the stock behind the guy's left arm. Now we can do a little attachment here. Let's get another part of the gun. Now here, I'll draw something like that. That's kind of like an AK-47 type uh, bullet holder. Bring this down like that. I'll give it a little, I'll con continue this along to create that part of the gun. Now remember, you can always slow this down at home because I know I'm going a little fast. But you can make your gun however you want, have whatever parts you want, just kind of make it go straight across. Now, uh, here at the end of the gun, <laughs> Davis is like, slow down, Dad. All right, I'll slow down for a little bit. But all I'm doing is just putting little segments on the gun. Because in the guns, you know, there are thicker parts, thinner parts, thicker parts again. Uh, you put in this sort of curvy thing that uh, is where the, the bullets go in, the clip. And then you get the tip of your gun. Looks great. Now, the fire burst at the end of the gun. I think I've done this before. I'm going to go a loop like that in an opposite loop like that sort of a, a wave. It's kind of how we do the angry eyebrows a little bit. You loop down, but then you do the opposite. And then maybe I'll put some squiggles in here, big squiggles that lead to smaller squiggles. That sort of indicates the, the flash outside the front of the gun. And then you can maybe do something like this to indicate, you know, it's really flashing. It's kind of like a mini explosion at the end of the gun. Now, what I can do here is indicate where the bullets are being ejected from the side of the gun. Because every time you shoot a, a bullet, the empty shell, the metal shell, shoots out the side. So I'll do one little circle. And then I'll give it kind of a sideways hat. I'll do another circle. I'll move the sideways hat in a little different direction. Little circle. I'll put the sideways hat in a different direction. Little circle, sideways hat in a different direction. That looks like the bullets are kind of flying out this way. And we put these little, they're kind of like almost quotation marks around each one to make it look like the bullets are moving. They're moving. They're jiggling. They're vibrating as they're moving away from the gun. And you can even make some jiggle lines like that around his shoulders, around his hands, around the gun to indicate that the whole thing is shaking. The whole thing is vibrating. And he's trying to keep it under control as he's trying to shoot straight ahead. So there we go. That's, you know, a basic soldier. You can actually, you know, you can finish the rest of his body here, show his arm going down there. Um, but that's, that's basically it. Now, let me draw a tank. So here, what I'm going to try to show you is to, to make it look like a cylinder has some depth to it. So the nozzle of the tank. First, let's just do kind of a, a thin circle like that. It's not really an oval. It's more like a thin circle. Now, let's put a line just like that. Connects here to here, and it follows the line, the, the, the left-hand side line. And then we fill in this part. Now, Watch what I do next. I start here, bring a line down to about here. Straight across, straight across. And then I 
make this line sort of the opposite of that line. And so what it looks sort of looks like a, a cup on its side. And it looks like this is the, the rim of the cup. And then you can kind of see the shadow as you're looking into the cup. Now this is the, the front of the tank turret. Now here, put a little rod like that. That's the rest of the turret. Put a little, it's maybe like a trapezoid or whatever shape you want for the top part of the tank. That's the, that's the part that moves around. You can put a little triangle on top. That could be the hatch where the guy goes into the tank. And then I'm going to draw the treads. Now, what I'm kind of going to do is do a, a kind of a trapezoid like that, but I'm going to flip it. Watch what I do here. I'm going to go extend it a little further. These are the treads of the tank, so they'll go about from here to here. I'm going to go over, and I'm going to round the edges, loop in, straight across, round the edge, loop in like that. So it's sort of like a inverted trapezoid here, but with rounded edges. On these ends of the treads, I'll do little circles. And in the little, in the big, in the part here, the thicker part of the treads, I'll do three big circles. I'll put one in the middle and two on the sides. Now, I'm going to show some depth to the treads. So basically, I'll just connect this to that corner and this to that corner. And to show some depth, this is kind of perspective. In the middle, I'll put one line up. Now, as I go to the sides, I'm going to angle the lines more and more. So watch this. I'm going to go like that. Then I'm going to go like that, a little bit more angled. And then I'm going to go like that, even more angled. And I'm going to do the opposite on the opposite side. And that kind of makes it look like the tank has some depth. And if you want, you can color like every other segment here to make it look more like treads. Fantastic. Okay, now, and if we want, we can put a big fire blast on the front of the tank, just like we did with the gun. And it looks like it's a giant, you know, boom, projectile coming out of the tank. Now, let me uh, just pause for a second. I'm going to refresh the page. All right, we're back and uh, I refresh the page. So what I'll do now is um, first, we're going to take the, the tank turret, the end of the tank turret, uh, kind of side, the cup on its side concept. And I'm going to see if I can show you how to make a zombie with his eye popping out. Okay. So let's just start since we're, you know, zombies remind me of Halloween. Halloween reminds me of uh, jack-o'-lanterns. So let's do what we did again with the front of that turn. We're going to make a kind of a thin circle. Maybe this will be a little thicker than the other one. Circle like that. Remember, we put a line down like that that is, matches that. And then we're going to color this in. That's the shadow. That's going to be one of the eyes of the pumpkin. We're just doing that so we can show the thickness of the pumpkin. Let's do that again. Right there. Okay, so that's the other eye of the pumpkin. Now, we know kind of what a pumpkin mouth looks like. Kind of, I'm going to give this pumpkin two teeth, one tooth on the top, one tooth on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do here is see the depth, the, the thickness that is shown here by these two lines. I'm going to do that here on the same side. See, we're seeing the thickness on the far side of the pumpkin. And we're going to do that the same thing there with the mouth. And we're going to do the same thing with the two teeth. See, we're just showing the thickness of these parts of the pumpkin. Now we don't do anything here because the pumpkin, the skin of the pumpkin is going to be covering that thickness line. So, and then I'll just complete the pumpkin. I'll just do this around it. Maybe 
Uh, maybe that looks more like an apple than a pumpkin. But And then we just draw kind of these lines around here that show the dimples in the pumpkin. Now, I'm showing you this again because it just shows like a, an empty eye socket, right? The jack-o'-lantern has empty eyes. And by the way, just for completeness sake, I might just color in that part of the, of the pumpkin. But now let's go on to a zombie. Again, draw the nose of your choice. That's my nose. Now this eye here is gonna have the eyeball popping out. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see. First, I'll start to do what we did here. I'm gonna draw just this part. I'm gonna draw one line. I'm gonna loop it over here, but I'm not gonna complete that circle. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start here, loop down, and loop down here, okay? So it looks like there's something coming out of this area. And then I'm gonna make a, a round circle, put a pupil in here, a little half circle around there to show the eye popping out. Now I'll finish this circle and then I'll come, I'll do this part again and fill this in. And it looks like the guy's eyes popping out. And you can see the vein behind the eye going back into the, the head. And then over here, I'm going to do another circle. Zombies, a lot of times they seem like they're half asleep. So I'm going to put his eyebrow, his, his eyelid going down a little bit. And then I'll give him an ear. Uh, his head here, I'll bring it up. But then I'll make kind of like a lightning bolt shape. And I can show part of his brain. Just put some squiggles there. Continue his head over. Maybe give him some hairs here, some hairs there, some hairs coming out of the back. His hairs kind of falling out. We can give him his mouth. We can give, give him kind of a craggly mouth that goes down here. Maybe give him a weird tongue. Finish the mouth. And there we go. We can just have some random hairs come in there. Fill this in here. And there's kind of a zombie. Just I'm just trying to give you a sense of how you can show something popping out of what might be an empty socket. So that's a zombie. Now, Davis wanted me to show you how to draw a big explosion uh, carrying on from our uh, military drawings. So I'm going to draw next a, uh, oh, did I do the flag yet? I didn't do the American flag yet. Before we see the atomic bomb, hopefully we see the American flag. So I'll show you the, how to do a flag here. So let's just make a flag pole kind of going out to the side a little bit, just like that. Let's put a little cap on it, maybe a little tiny rectangle on its side, and then a circle on top. You usually see this sort of decorative sphere on the top of a flag pole. Now, once you've done that, watch what I do here. I'm going to connect about halfway down the pole. I'm going to make that. I'm going to do that. A curve. See that? Now, I bring a curve up like that. And I'm going to do another curve here and loop around. Okay, so you see that? You got one curve here, upward curve matching upward curve, but then I loop it around. Now, why did I do that? I'll show you in a second. I'm going to match this line with this line. This is going to be the first billowing fold of the flag, which is going to be flapping in the wind. This, I start mirroring, mirroring this line up, but then I stop. This is the, the flag folded over. And then here, I go out, up, and over. And this kind of makes it look like the flag is billowing in the wind. I'll make a line here that parallels this one, but up here, this is the, the star part of the flag. I can use some cross hatching here. I go like this, and then I go on the opposite side, which will quickly make some stars. And then 
You got 13 stripes representing the original 13 colonies. I'm not necessarily going to do 13. I'm just going to do some lines across to represent uh, the stripes. And then you can color them in, you know, red, white, red, white, red, white, all the way down. So that's just sort of a, uh, a flag billowing in the wind. Excellent, bud. Um, now, finally, I'll do an atomic explosion. A really big explosion. So when your tank is shooting, if it's shoot shooting atomic projectiles, maybe this is what would happen. Um, let me just uh, change the, the paper here for a second. So, Dad? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, here it is. Excellent. <laughs> I like the zombie I like green. This. I don't even like this green. Good, 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 I good. This. I would okay. pay for this. I would pay for this. <laughs> okay, good. All right, still rolling. Wait, wait. Yep. Um, do, do I have to do an explosion? No, just you don't. You're all done. Just, just stay here. You don't have to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to show it. Yeah, I can. And don't shoot. Okay. Um, all right. So here, I'm going to... What's that, buddy? So you still stay here. Okay. Now, finally, guys, I'm going to do the atomic explosion. So we'll start, say this is the ground. I'm not going to draw the ground, but say it starts right about here. Atomic bomb kind of sucks a lot of the dirt up in the air. So I'm going to do a swerve here and an opposite swerve here. See that kind of flows up, flows up. Now, kind of like I did the perspective with the tank, let's put a, a quick line in the middle and some lines coming in from the sides like that. That's the atomic bomb sucking up the dirt uh, with this powerful explosion. Now, you might see an atomic bomb kind of looks like it has this little ring around it, kind of like Saturn's ring. So watch, the, watch what I do here. I start about, pretend this is the dirt being sucked up. I start about here. Now I'm going to go out, over, and like that. See? I don't close it. I don't close it because I want to keep showing this dirt going up. And then I might just give this some thickness. So I go like this. See? Boom. That's kind of the Saturn ring effect of this atomic explosion. Then, these lines here, once the dirt is sucked up, it starts spewing out again. So I sort of match these lines to here and do some of that. Now you can kind of connect these lines some more if you want to show the dirt being sucked up through the little thing that looks like Saturn's ring. And now we got the big mushroom cloud, the classic atomic bomb shape. Now watch this. Remember we did the clouds before? I'm going to kind of go like this, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to stop there because I want to give it, then I'll start back up here, boom, 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 like that. It's a big explosion, but a boom, look at that. looks like there's a lot of power there. And you can add some of these in like that if you want. Maybe add some, some of that in to show where the explosion is starting on the ground. And when you draw this, you know, you can have different shades of red or orange. And uh, anyway, so that's a that's my version of a big atomic explosion. So there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this military zombie related uh, cartooning uh, session. And now I'm going to show you what Davis and Sophie did. Here's what Davis did. Look at that. Let me see. Make sure you can see that. That is fantastic. Look at that guy holding that gun down. Man, you can see the emotion, the anger. Look at that tank. You see the perspective there on the treads? Fantastic. Look at that sideways cup. Fantastic. Here is the atomic explosion and the American flag. Very well done. Uh, Sophie here did kind of a uh, her own feminine spin on this. Very nice. She's she like a nope. She's, I guess so. Sophie just was uh, exercising some civil disobedience nope. here. Didn't really want, didn't go for the military stuff so much. Although, what's going on here, so? Freedom's dead. Oh, my. Okay. Well, then we did have one casualty. And then Sophie just kind of did a female zombie. And, and oh, you did, yeah, you did the, uh, the, the pumpkin and the flag. Very nice. So, thanks for participating. 
and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye.